Good morning, Neverland! Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday! Sunday. I hope y'all are doing okay today. We're gonna do some pretty cool stuff today. We're gonna focus on sequencers and how they can lend themselves musically to anything. Sequencers allow you to focus on the cool parts of a patch, which are the controls. You know, you don't have to focus too much on what notes are playing. You can just affect things and play with the sound. So we're going to build something today that's going to be really interesting, and I don't know that it's going to follow the same exact, uh, same exact sequence as this. It might be something similar and maybe have a few of the same notes. What we're actually going to do today is going to be basically the Lydian mode of the major scale played over C. We're going to set up a couple of sequencers, we're going to do something fairly traditional and set up like a C sort of a bass line, then we're going to set up a randomized Lydian major scale uh, and maybe set that up over one or two or, you know, a few different sequencers, what have you. And these will be playing different oscillators, different sounds. And um, what I would like to do is, with this music, I would like to illustrate the power of adding some sort of a kick drum. So not only do I want uh, some sequencer, some music to be happening. I also just want a kick drum to be happening. You know, not anything uh, fancy in terms of pitch, just more or less in terms of gait and controlling the, um, you know, the overall shape of the sound over time using the VCA. So let's dive in. very cool and made that transition pretty seamless not hitting the space bar god damn it not hitting the space bar the space bar stops the program boys and girls we don't want to do that we want to keep the program running that's what we want to do so what we also want to do is we want to start building a new reactor block how thoughtful of us I mean how original right that's something we always Something I mean it's something we never do, right? That's that's not something we ever do. <clears throat> no, I'm just joking. We do that all the time. And we're probably gonna do that a lot a, a lot more. Just because it's simple, 
it's fun and we get to have a fun day on Sunday. So what I'm doing is opening a new reactor block. I'm going to go ahead and add a few things that I know I'm going to need. Like, I'm going to add, let's see. I know I'm going to add, I know I'm going to need at least three of these. Because one is going to be my kick. And I'm going to go ahead and... Just start labeling things that way so that I know what's what. And there we go. Um, so one's going to be my kick. One's going to be my base sort of, you just sort of standard, you know, baseline in C. And then the other one's going to be the scale. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and start dragging in some other stuff I know I'm also going to need. I'm going to try something. I'm going to see if I can hold one and then say control, hold the other, and drag two in at once. I don't know if that'll work. Hey, it does. That's awesome. So, you know, this should just be a combo. Should build a... Maybe one day we can figure out how to build a reactor block. That'd be a really fun Sunday, fun day. You know, just spending time building one of these things and making one of these units a single unit. How about that? An amp and an ADSR in a single unit. Uh, be pretty useful. I think it'd be pretty useful. You know, it could take up about the same amount of space. You know, have about the same amount of controls. But anyhow, I digress. Let's, we know we're going to need three of these. So, let's say this is K, let's say this is oh, oh, 001, you know what, I know what these are, so I really don't, <clears throat> I really don't need to be too informative with the names. I know that that's an ADSR. I know that that's a VCA, you know, and so I'm just going to label them. So they're already connected up. They're ready for me to go. Um, so now I know what I'm also going to need. I'm basically building the output stage here. So now I know I'm also going to need the mixer. Of course, and I really liked on some of the other patches, I really, really liked what the reverb was doing. So I'm going to give actually a reverb a shot basically right at the output stage. So I'm going to go into a mixer here and then I'm going to build a reverb into the end. So, all right, I'm kind of building my output stage here. So let's kind of before I dive into the realm that I've kind of helped build over the last couple of episodes of Community Blocks, uh, I'm going to stick around in my factory library here and add a couple things I know I'm going to need. So I'm adding this Rounds Reverb unit, which is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous sounding. And it's just going to be a single lane. It's just going to be the effects, basically the effects loop, not even the loop. You could call it a loop if you want. You could have a wet dry on it, so, you know, call it what you want. But it's right there at the output stage. And then, let's add our mixer that we know we love. That we know and love. That we love and know. Uh, here we go. So, a little weird... I guess one is going to go into two, <laughs> and kick is going to go into one, and two is going to go into three. Because <laughs> why do we have to make sense? You know, it's uh, Sunday fun day. We do whatever the fuck we want. So, I think that our, I think our output stage is just about ready to rock and roll. We have everything ready to go. We got our rounds, reverb, delay set up. Let's take a look at the panel. 
real quick. So I know what I'm going to do <clears throat> is kind of build three lanes. So I'm going to move these down here. Start building those out, seeing kind of what those look like. Put those in context. I'm going to keep this junk up top. I'm probably going to keep the VCAs. And well, no, you know, I don't know yet. We'll see. So I know I'm going to go ahead and put the envelopes, though, in their lane. This is always the fun part. I can never aim this stuff, but that's part of the, uh, that's part of the fun. That's part of the magic. That's part of the, you know, screaming at yourself for not getting it right. You're just like, damn it, why won't it work? Surely it doesn't like me. Um, <clears throat> now what we're going to do is more or less start adding the fun stuff, the sound sources. So we, be, we got a lot of the guts set up and ready to receive sound, more or less. That's kind of what, what we got so far. So now what we're going to do is I would actually like to dive into, personally, I would like to dive into my selection of things that I've downloaded and really haven't had the opportunity to try yet. So like this Sirius VCO. Let's check this out. Let's see what this is. So this just looks pretty cool. And I don't know what this is, but we're going to go ahead and... <clears throat> use this as our number one. It looks like it's got multiple different uh, types of um, multiple different types of outputs, and just to see if we can get some information. It doesn't look like there's a lot of information on it. That's fine. It's pretty straightforward. It says VCO. It says you know serious VCO. I downloaded it off of the, <clears throat> excuse me, I downloaded it off of the Reactor user community, and why didn't somebody tell me I had this connected wrong? That's so funny. So, of course, I have the, uh, ADSRs connected into the wrong place, but that happens. You just got to correct it, and no harm, no foul. And now I'm going to pass this in where I intended, into number one. Let's take a look at my panel again real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and dial the modulation input for A all the way where I know I need it to be. Okay, so we got our first oscillator in here. Good to go. What about our second oscillator? What do we got? What do we have in here? System B. I don't know what that, let's see what this is. Whew, this is a lot of stuff. And I don't know, I would do want to dig into this one day. I think this is like a, this is like an episode all by itself, probably. So let's revisit that. <clears throat> let's see what else we got. HT oscillator. This oscillator utilizes nested hyperbolic. I love it when you guys have information, by the way, because I'll read that shit out loud verbatim. So put it there, please, please. Made by Jonathan Trimbley. I've said thank you more than once. Thank you, Jonathan. This oscillator utilizes nested hyperbolic and trigonomic trigonometric functions to create waveform complexities. This can lead to some very organic sounds or complete noise. I like the sound of this already. Also makes for an interesting LFO when brought to sub-audio rate frequencies. Modulate parameters to really bring NHT functions alive. Alive. Analog ring modulation done by Brett. Uh, Brett Lavalli. 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 And this module was made by Jonathan Tremblay. Thank you, Jonathan. Said it before and I'll say it again. You're a wizard, man. Thank you much. Thank you for powering 
our Sunday. So we're going to pass this guy into number two. And I think we're all, I mean, I, I do this just to kind of connect things up for my own brain. I know I'm going to probably put a filter in between here. I just, I, you know, for right now, uh, this is how I build comfortably. So, um, and I'm actually kind of dipping into the panel view every now and again. Just to clean it up. Dude, this has presets by itself. <gasps> You're kidding. This is a powerhouse, guys. I don't even know what this is yet, but this looks cool as who. Uh yeah. Yeah. This looks really awesome. Uh let's take a look. Uh, what are we going to use for our kick? We have to find something. Let's see what we got. Blocks. Blocks. Oscillators. Drum. Ooh. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. That's kind of what we need. We need, you know, a drum sound. So, let's see what this is. Drum. Triggerable drum noise source. One trigger activates three envelopes. Oscillator amplitude, noise amplitude, and oscillator pitch. All three are simple decay envelopes with nearly instant attack. That's what you need for a drum. Left half is the oscillator. This uses a bento box core. That's uh, it's good stuff. Nice deep sine wave. You know, you can you can get some good stuff out of that that that, that bento box oscillator is a solid oscillator. So. The right half is a dual mode noise source. That's cool. Noise added to that just gives it a, you know, you, it's just an extra coolness that you can dial into just the right amount. You know what I mean? You don't have to use a lot of it, but it's super cool when you add some of it. Multi mode resonant filter. Hmm. Coffee. In the center are mixing controls. That's what you need. This looks really cool already. I think this is the, this is the winner. This is the winner, guys. Now, I don't, I don't know if I want anything to control pitch. I think I want to control pitch for the drum. But what I want to do is I want to use some... I want to hook up some FM. I want to do some things that are a little bit unexpected. I'm going to use the sign of the Sirius, actually, to run FM to everything with the exception of uh i'll use the out of this to run fm to the sirius if i decide to do that so just you know if i i don't know what's going to happen that's what i like to set up i like to set up situations where i just don't know what's going to happen when i turn this knob but i know it's probably going to be pretty sweet so whatever that is can't wait <laughs> so <laughs> One thing I know we're probably going to need from our standard stuff is our friend, where is it? Clock divider. Love this mother father. So this is going to actually help divide this existing gate into different sources. And what I think I'm going to do, here's what I think I'm going to do. Let me think about this. What I think I'm going to do is run the clock at 32. Hear me out. Which means the first, this means the very first division is going to be running at 32. It's way too fucking fast, you say. What the hell are you going to do with that? Hear me out. I'm probably going to have a little bit of a slower tempo for starters. And what I think I'm going to do is use that for one of the oscillators. And I'm going to use one of the slower ones like this eighth. Let's see. Eight. Which is uh, quarter notes on a 32. If I have my division right. Who knows? We'll, f we'll find out, but I think what we can do is we can always re-hook up the gate source to kind of match what we need. And 
man, we really, uh, I'm going to, I want to say we don't need the pitch. We don't need the utility note in. So we're going to save some room here and I'm going to pass, I know, gate number four to the kick drum, gate number one, the really fast guy and the slightly slower guy to number two. And I might switch this up later. We'll see how this works for right now. Um, but I think this is going to work for right now. Let's take a look at our panel. Start making some clean decisions. Um, this actually needs to go here. And this actually needs to go here. There we go. Now we're getting closer. Getting closer, ladies and gentlemen. And I think our VCA can live can live in the lane, can live in the pocket. It's like uh like bowling. Not really. It's nothing fucking like bowling at all. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? So um It's already looking pretty fun and we haven't done anything yet. But we know that we're going to get something pretty sweet when we start hooking this up. Oh, we have nothing hooked up out of. Here's this out. Yeah, well, that's what we want to do. We don't want to send a single thing out. We want to send the mix out because we know there's so... It seemed like there was a mixer. I haven't seen the knob yet, but... It looked like there was a mixer or it sounded like there was a mixer. Controls. Here we go. This ought to help. There's a lot of information on here. I love that. Controls, pitch, decay, mix controls. There we go. Crossfade between the noise source and the oscillator. That's perfect. Love it. This is going to work. I think this is going to work pretty well. So, what we going to do... These all have <clears throat> independent envelopes. What they don't have is independent filters. So, time to go back into the treasure chest. We're going to go look for some filters that we can use and i actually kind of like there's there's actually this one that came here we go west coast it's called a low pass gate and i don't know what's there's like a chocolatey side or i don't know there's like different colors it's like different fruit flavors or some shit different fruity Different rainbow flavors with our friend the Low Pass Gate from the West Coast. And West Coast has more of a, I would say, more of a Buchla style. The West Coast LPG represents a block's take on a Low Pass Gate, a peculiar filter circuit originally designed for a synthesizer legend, Don Buchla. There you go. For controlling the dynamic properties of a sound, it uses an optocoupler, whatever the fudge that is, that smooths, smooths the LPG's response to external control. When excited by a sharp edge signal via its pluck input, the LPG opens and closes its natural sounding manner, giving sounds plausible quality that's reminiscent of a drum hit or a pluck string. That's exactly what we want. That's why I chose that one. Um, what's this? Noise and chaos. I mean, these are cool. I want to explore these as effects. I also want to explore, at some point, episode idea, I want to explore creating drum sounds. This is kind of a cheat, I think. They're not really a cheat. But you would, you would put a number of modules together to get something like what this one module does. Which is the combination of some oscillators firing at really, really sharp, really, really tight attacks. Really, really tight filters. Really, really tight envelopes, you know. And everything would be not really clean, just depending on what you're going for. But everything would be very... Um, very tight, very sharp, and that's what a drum is. That's what a drum is. So we're still rolling, and it looks like looks like we are just a little over the CPU limit, 
which means we may have to rethink what we're doing here. Let's see. Yeah, I'd say so. Looks like we may be a little out of options in terms of CPU. Uh, which means we may need to scale down just a little bit. No big deal. Um, I would love to explore this one day. And what I think we need to do is probably run the session in Pro Tools within a little bit of, uh, what is it? It's basically a, um, kind of like a longer sample rate or a lo you know, like a longer delay time or something like that. It's just one setting they have to pay attention to. But what it does is it allows your session and the, particularly the plugins on your session to run quite a bit more efficiently so that, um, you know, you don't have to worry about things such as CPU overload. So I'm going to disconnect a few things and we're going to run just the music portion of what my idea was. We're going to nix the drum idea portion of it, even though it's a very cool idea. We're going to go ahead and just kind of work with these sequencers. And I think we have quite a bit to set up right now. Anyway, just in the music, it was going to probably take quite a while anyway, given our time. Um, we're kind of in the sweet pocket right now for the length of this, uh, length of this anyway. So what we want to do is get to hearing some music sometime soon. So I wonder if we can just hit mute, hit play and see what we got. Do we have anything? We don't got anything. Not yet. Let's see. That's running nothing. It's running the pitch. That'll be why. <gasps> Not what we wanted to do. Um, that's beautiful. Well, I didn't mean to do that. So let's go back and re-add our clock divider and go ahead and set it back up. So there's our gates. And let's just run out number two. No. See, that's where I keep messing up. It doesn't go into the pitch. I always think it should go into the first one. It's the first one, damn it. That's where it should go. Not where it should go. It should go into the second one. The one that says gate. Helps if you read, boys and girls. It helps if you read. So, I wonder if we have any sound now. Nope, no sound. So, this is going through pitch. Let's see. definitely have sounds and I know what it is the gate also needs to be hooked up to the gate of the envelope Eureka we've made it boys and girls we've made it We've made it, boys and girls. We have made it. <clears throat> I like this. Yep. I 
like it. So we're going to set up our pattern in C, and kind of slow it down. Doesn't need to be near as fast as it was. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm trying to get away from. I want to go to C3. I'm trying to live in the C2 and the C1. Not so much the C0. I'm feeling C1. I still want it to be musical. I want you to be able to tell what the note is. That's kind of the, the whole point. So let's go with a C1. It's a little too predictable for my taste. How about this? Yeah, I'm cool with something like that. I just said it's a little too predictable. It's a little too 4 4. You know, I've had it. I'm done with 4 4, man. I've had it. That shit. Not really. <clears throat> so, this is kind of cool. This is kind of about what I wanted. I think this one's playing at about half the speed of this one. And what we want to do, I brought notes brought notes this time boys and girls that's how serious this episode is no i want to play the lydian mode of the major scale over c so that's notes i wrote this down this time c d e f sharp g a b and back to c you can do another d and loop keep looping around if you want but that's it c d and so I think we can live in the C3s, in the Ds, in the Es, the 3s, and the 4 octaves. That's what I think. So C3, let's do a D, like 4. Let's do a E3, 3. I'm just going to alternate. I'm not going to really worry about it too much. And then, uh, what is it? What did I say? F sharp. F sharp, we'll make that a 4. And then G, we'll make that a 3. And A, we'll make that a 4. Blah. Sometimes it takes a second. <clears throat> but hey, you come prepared, it takes less seconds. You get onto music that makes a little bit more sense. Sounds a little bit more like music. Or you just poke around here on a video looking like a dumbass for an hour. And back to C. <laughs> Let's do C4 because that's already C3 at the beginning. And fuck it. Let's go C sharp. Let's just throw a little curveball in there. Yeah. Not only C4, C sharp. Why not? Why not? So let's hear what this guy sounds like. It probably doesn't sound too good, but let's fade it in and see. I like this, I'm going to randomize it.
I love it. what we set out to do and that's all we can ever hope for on a Sunday sometimes you run out of CPU sometimes you run out of ideas today I hit a wall sometimes you hit walls it happens you know you shouldn't give up roll with it What do you do? You make the most of it. That's what you do. And you have a fun day on a Sunday. Until next time.